Hello and welcome back to another cookie tag video. So in today's video I'm going to be teaching you on how you can make your very own keycard door inside of Roblox Studio. So this keycard door is rank locked and can be customised to your liking. So before I show you how to make this I'm just going to give you a quick example inside of Roblox Studio. Okay, so here we are inside of Roblox Studio. Keep in mind this keycard door is rank locked, so only if you're the appropriate rank will you receive this keycard. Then let's grab this keycard, let's walk through the door, and you can see if the keycard touches the door, it'll have a nice animation and we can walk through. If we're a regular user and we don't get the keycard and we go to the door, we won't be able to get through. So now let's head over into a brand new Roblox Studio instance and I'll show you how to make this. Okay, and here we are inside of our brand new Roblox Studio window. Keep in mind, all scripts used in today's tutorial can be found in a link in the description down below where you can copy them, and there will be a few models you can also copy. So today, we're going to be starting off by actually organising our workspace, and we're going to do this by first of all creating the keycard door. So let's do this by making a part. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger, and a bit wider. Of course you can customize this door, just keep in mind this will be the main part of your door. So I'm going to keep my door super basic and just keep it as a singular part. And now I'm going to name this part keycard door and then inside of it I'm going to insert a script and I'm going to call that script door manager. So let's click this plus button, click script and then click door manager. Then after this, we're going to create a brand new script inside of service script service, and we're going to call this script keycard giver. So let's create that. And then of course, let's edit the properties and set it to keycard giver. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to create a folder inside of replicated storage, and we're going to call this folder tools. Now this is where we're going to be storing our keycard that we'll put into the player's inventory if they have the appropriate role. So, in the description down below, there will be a link where you can download a keycard tool. Keep in mind, you can make your own keycard tool, but I'm not going to be teaching you on how to make tools today. So, if you'd like to, there will be a download link in the description down below. And since I already have that model downloaded, I'm going to paste it in. And there you go, we can see we have our keycard model. It's pretty basic, it's just white, but of course you can customise it if you understand how to make tools. Now we're going to drag our keycard into our tools folder and now we can start off by scripting. So first of all we're going to open up keycard giver. So you can do this by double clicking on keycard giver and then we're going to start off by defining a few variables. So first of all we're going to say local replicated storage equal game get service and then we're going to get the replicated storage. Next of all we're going to get the tools folder which is inside of replicated storage. So we're going to say local tools equal replicated storage, wait for child, and then in here, we're going to say tools. Now we're going to drop two lines, and we're going to start off by saying local group ID equals zero, and then say local min rank equal zero. Now we want to customize these variables. So let's head over to roblox.com, and I'll show you why we're going to be customizing these variables. And now you can see we're here at roblox.com and I've gone to the selected group I want to use. Now I'm going to get our group ID. Since we don't want normal players getting our keycard, we only want a certain people inside of our group who have a specific role or buff to get this keycard. So let's start off by copying this group ID. So we're going to double click on this number. We're going to right click and then we're going to click copy. Now we're going to head back to Roblox Studio. And then in here, we're going to be pasting our group ID. Now let's head back to Roblox, and then let's click on configure group. And now we only want a certain role or buff to use it. So let's head over to roles. I only want moderators or buff to be able to access this keycard. So let's click on moderator, and then let's copy this rank ID. And this means all the ranks above the moderator, so admin, developer, or owner will be able to have access to this tool. So let's head back to Roblox Studio, and inside of min rank, let's paste in that rank ID. 
Now that we've done all of that, we're going to now essentially code the part that gives the user the keycard if they have the right rank. So let's drop a few lines and let's say added. So when a player joins, and then we're going to pass the player in here, and then we're going to say if the player, which we defined above, get rank in group, group ID, so we're now getting the rank of the player inside of the group we just defined, and now we're going to use this symbol to say is bigger or equal to min rank then and now we're going to make a cloned tool and we're going to say local cloned tool equals tools dot keycard and then colon clone and now basically we already have a clone tool but the issue is this clone tool has no parent so we need to make sure that this clone tool actually goes into a player's inventory and to do this we can say clone tool and I've actually made a typo so let's rename that to clone tool not clone tools and then we're going to say dot parent equal and then player dot backpack and there we go let's head into roblox studio and if we test it we should receive a key card and great it looks like we're working and we've got the key card and as you can see if we go to the store it doesn't work yet and now we're going to have to actually make the script that runs the door actually work so let's stop the game and let's head over to door manager. So you remember we created this script as a child of the keycard door and let's double click to open that. And now we're basically going to be detecting when the door is touched, if what touches the door is a keycard and debounce is set to false and then we're going to tween the door open and then after a certain amount of time we're going to tween the door shut. So let's do this by defining the tween service. So let's say local tween service equal game get service tween service. And now we've just gotten the tween service. And now we're going to say local debounce equals false. Now the reason we're using a debounce is we don't want this door to constantly being opened and then closed and opened and then closed. We want it all to be working nice and smoothly. And to do this we're going to be using a debounce. Now let's say local time until door closes and I found that 1.5 works best however you can customize this. This is how long the door will stay open once it's opened but for me 1.5 seems to work just great and it's plenty of time and now we're going to get the actual door which is local door equals script.parent and so now we've defined the door which is the parent of this script. Now we actually need to detect when this door is touched. So to do this, we're going to drop a few lines and we're going to say door.touchedConnect function. And then in here, we're going to get what actually touched the part. And now we need to check if what touched the part is actually a key card. Because there could be lots of other things touching the door, such as the base plate, as player arms, all of these types of things. And we want to specifically make sure that a key card is touching it. So let's say if touched.parent dot name equal equals and now we need to be careful with this make sure you type in a capital k and then say key card make sure you put it inside of a string and then we're going to say and debounce equals false and so if the debounce is set to false then and this line basically in summary it checks if the key card is there and if the debounce is set to false now of course we need to make sure the debounce is set to true so everything doesn't go all crazy and we're going to say debounce equals true and now we're going to have to use our tween service to create a tween so this is super simple to do we can say tween service create and now in here we're going to put door which is the instance we defined above now we're going to set how long this little animation takes so we're going to say tweeninfo.new 0.3 works just fine but you can customize this of course this is how many seconds it takes for the animation to complete and now we're going to make a table and then we're going to say transparency make sure you use a capital T equal one and then we need to make sure we play this tween and we can do this by saying colon and then play now after this we need to make sure that somebody can walk for the door so we can say door dot can collide so if you can collide and we're going to set that to false so no you can't collide with it now we're going to wait until the door should start the closing sequence and then after this we can say tween service create 
then door, and then tween info dot new. We can set this to 0 0.3 again. Transparency inside of our table. And we can set this to zero now, and we can play it. And then after this, we can drop and we can say door.calculide equals true. And then the debalance can be set false. And it looks like everything is here. I accidentally pressed Alt and P and it tried to make me publish, but we're going to ignore that. And now let's give it a quick test to make sure everything's working. So let's click the play button. And now that we're loaded in, let's grab our keycard. Let's walk up to this door. And you can see it opens and we can walk through it. And let's wait if we move away. It should appear again. Ooh, does it look like we have an issue? Let's press F9. We may have an issue here. So I don't think I actually anchored my keycard door. And this means that my keycard door is just going to go everywhere. So it's really important that we make sure that our keycard door is anchored. So let's stop that test with this stop button up here. And now once it's loaded, let's just remove this print statement. And then let's make sure we select this part. And then let's click the anchor button. And hopefully it should work if we go to play mode. Let's just give it another quick test. And great, we're now inside. We got our key card. Let's move around. Let's open the door. Let's walk through. And amazing, it works. So thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to head over to our forums where you can make an account and make a scripting support and then myself or another amazing community member will help with your script and make sure it's all fixed. Thank you for tuning in and bye bye.